Hello and welcome to Flexible Lifestyle. This is a community filled with people like Jeff Klein. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Marion. How you doing? <laughs> so good. So good. Now I'm in Houston and you're in Dallas. Dallas. Both of us are Texas. Yay. 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 <laughs> What's the weather like that? Uh, right now it's March, uh, March 12th. What's the weather like in Dallas? Well, it was uh, 80 yesterday and it's 40 today. So, you know what they say, if you don't like the weather in Texas, wait 15 minutes and it'll change. There you go. There you go. Well, we, um, we've had a pretty cold, wet and dreary winter here so we're really looking forward to the spring a lot of water so the blue bonnets and all the all the great blooms are about to happen and i know it's going to happen fast yeah, it so. looks pretty even when it's you know 40 something it's still pretty out you're right you're right it's better than sun is shining shoveling snow and scraping ice and yeah and got another <laughs> snowstorm up in boston so uh they can have it yes i've heard that they got hit pretty hard this year that's why uh, I choose to live in Texas. So that brings us to the flexible lifestyle that we get to live. Um, I know that you live a very flexible lifestyle, and so I want to introduce you to the community, and I want to talk about how it has been in the past, and then what you're doing now, and then we'll talk about the future, what your plans are, okay? Okay, great. So, Jeff, tell us a little bit about you, your name, the company name, and a little bit about what you're doing for work. Well, uh, I'm a speaker and trainer, and uh, that's been an evolution in itself. Uh, you know, you, when you start out as an entrepreneur, you have a lot of things you, you, don't, have, you don't have freedom when you're a new entrepreneur. Uh, you're, you're working all, as many hours as possible on your business, and you don't have the flexibility to say no to new clients. Uh, and one of the benchmarks for me when I knew I was doing okay was, when I was able to fire a client because I could, I could move. I didn't need their business badly enough to put up with their drama. Um, but anyway, as a speaker and trainer, I spend most of my days uh, teaching other business people how to use speaking to get business. Uh, I also teach business networking, things like the uh, 30 second elevator pitch. And I run a membership organization called speakercoop.com where we have a website full of, resources and speakers for organizations for their events. And then I also uh, book other speakers. In other words, I, I find engagements for some of my clients for a small cadre of speakers and trainers. I'm so. going to give a little story here. I love telling stories. So um, as a client of Jeff's, um, I was able to let him know I was coming to Dallas and he he booked me for two solid weeks. I didn't, I had no idea, <laughs> but he had me going all different, all over Dallas. I mean, I, places I didn't even know existed. And so I love that about what you're doing. You're, you're helping speakers not only get gigs, but, but also teaching them the best way to get their message across, how to make money while they're speaking and all the different things that come into play. Now, because you live a flexible lifestyle, could you do this anywhere? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I choose to live here um, partially because this is where my good friends are. Uh, this is where my nephew is and mom. And uh, Houston is only a few hours away where my nieces are. And right now, as a single guy, my family focus is being the best uncle there is. Uh, and, you know, when, when, fam when my own family comes along, that'll... Uh, we'll see, but uh, you know, for a time, I was the only one of our th of the three kids in our family that was able to be here for both of my parents. Um, and you know, it's just mom now, and my one of my sisters now lives with her, so they share a house. Their families um, have blended, as they say these days, and uh, so there's less pressure for where I need to live now. It's where I choose to live. Let's talk about how you set yourself up for a flexible lifestyle. Was it conscious? Did you set out to say, okay, I need these tools, I need this technology, I need, I need this in my business? Or was it, did it just happen? No, um, I, was, I, w I grew up here in Dallas. Um, I say grew up. I, I was in Dallas from the ages of two to nine. Um, and my sisters were both born here. 
and then we moved away. So I've lived in the Northeast. I've lived in New Jersey, right outside of New York City. And I went to high school and a couple years of college in Louisiana. So um, <clears throat> my whole uh, immediate family has always want, had always wanted to move back to Dallas. And eventually we all did. <laughs> so uh, I was already where I wanted to live by choice and hadn't really thought about the flexible lifestyle piece. But what happened over the last, well, probably, probably since I started going to Houston once a month and really living sort of sort of living in two places um in 2010 we expanded speaker co-op to houston and opened our second chapter there and the reason we chose houston was that there was a long list of people that everybody knew but the primary reason was i didn't wasn't seeing my nieces enough and uh i was able they were um try to do the math really quick they were like two and four and uh, like I said, I just wasn't seeing them enough. So I engineered a way to see them once a month by coming and doing business in Houston once a month. Setting <clears> yourself <throat> up for success. I love that. And so we did a good job. You know, we, had, we were really successful in Houston there when we first, first launched, and we did a good job over the next several years. And then luckily, and so <clears throat> I started being flexible in how I was living uh, completely unintentionally, pretty much like everything else in my life has happened. Uh, <laughs> I didn't become a speaker by design. That was uh, completely uh, uh, karma and accident. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so here we are. Um, I bought a few years ago, I stopped uh, buying desktop computers and started buying laptops. Uh, <clears throat> that right there is a big boat anchor that you can release if you uh, if you choose that, because now your office goes with you everywhere you go. Um, and, you know, the idea of when I first started working remotely or working from home, which also meant working remotely a lot of the time, we couldn't even, uh, you couldn't get good Wi-Fi even at Starbucks back then. Uh, I used to go to, uh, at the time, Kinko's and now FedEx office and work there because they had reliable internet. Um, <clears throat> Starbucks had internet if you bought coffee, and I don't drink coffee. <laughs> so, so I wound up discovering this FedEx office because you could also print there as well. And so I did a lot of my work from there when I was uh, tired of the home office. Now it's super easy. Now Panera Bread is my uh, more often go-to than not. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a couple of local places I enjoy as well. I'm a, a big proponent of shop locally. Uh, so there's some coffee shops and uh, a small chain in Dallas called Cafe Brazil, which always has reliable Wi-Fi and a few plugs around the restaurant as well. So, uh, but the, the main big chain I, sh I, I frequent when it comes to for business is Panera because they're everywhere. They never give you a hard time about staying there for hours at a time. Uh, as long as you don't interfere with a lunch rush. And uh, they always have reliable Wi-Fi. They always have electricity to plug into. And I've even worked at Panera's in Washington, D.C., in Kansas City. I mean, it's, it's not just Dallas. So, um, What if you had to meet a client? Uh, before you answer that, um, going to a coffee shop is okay, but if you need a private office, here in Houston, I, one of my sponsors, and I've been with them since day one, is Office in America. So okay. it's an executive suite or a, a virtual office. Now, I can go into the office, but um, they, uh, they handle my mail. They answer my phone in mm -hmm. their, my company name. Um, there's just so many benefits to it uh, that I don't – I could go to a coffee shop. Sure. But, but I love the fact that I can go into this co-working space. Uh, right. And it's better for your business to be there than at a, uh, a UPS store because Amazon and uh, not, not Amazon, Google has kind of caught on to the whole UPS store model. And if you're using that as your business address for your Google searches, <clears throat> you, they, they have a, there's a negative aspect to that now. Mm -hmm. So people using a, a one of those, um, 
you know, the UPS store used to be mailboxes, et cetera, for the business identity address right. is no longer the, a good idea. It's a better idea to do it at a sweets place like you are. Well, I just love Office in America. The, uh, the benefits that I get for it are, well, they're just tremendous. Like I said, I've been with them almost since day one. And, and so I've grown with them and, you know, I give them advice. On <laughs> yeah. Well, I like the idea of having, having my address out there, not being where I live. Right, 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 right. You know, especially uh, more for a single woman than a single man, but um, I'm also a proponent of not using your cell phone as your primary phone number. Oh, I've learned that lesson. I have yeah. learned that lesson, yes. That's, yeah. uh, I'm using... getting so many robocalls now that I'm, yeah. I'm having to have people leave a message and then I'll call them back because I just, it's ridiculous. Now. Yeah, I, I opted into a Google voice number several yes. years ago. Yes. And back then you could actually get a word as part of your number. Oh. So, so it's like 757-96-SPEAK. Oh, fantastic. The, yeah, and that's the number that's on the website for people to book speakers and um, things like that. So, uh, and it goes to my cell phone. Right, right. But right. I'm not giving you out my cell phone number. That number. That's right. Well, Jeff, I want to ask you now about your clients. If anybody wanted to work with you, if they were a speaker or they wanted to be a speaker, or some of the clients that you have currently, how are you helping them to live a more flexible life? Well, the primary connection point between our members and the people who want to hire, who they want to hire them is a website, which has no borders. You know, so uh, when you join Speaker Co-op, you get a listing on the website, a speaker page. Uh, if you're a resource for speakers like you, you get a listing on as a resource page. And we get over 700 hits a month of people looking for speakers. So... Um, <clears throat> for anywhere from $99 a year to $4.99 a year, depending on the benefits you want. Uh, I think a website with your information is pretty flexible as far as, it doesn't matter where you live, you put the phone number and the email address that you want to be reached at. Uh, and for my booking clients, it's my number that people call, not theirs. And when you book people, you can book them anywhere in the United States or basically in the, anywhere in the world. Yeah, don't, don't even put the U.S. border on us, Marion. We're right, a, a, a I just business without borders. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I have speakers that speak other languages, so we're able to, to do that if people need a you know, Spanish language speaker or a French language speaker or something like that. Um, <clears throat> You know, I have, there's a number of, you know, the, the number of members is, is a finite number, but the number of speakers that I'm connected to is not. So, you know, if somebody need, whatever topic somebody needs, if they can't find it on our website through a keyword search, they should just send me an email and uh, I'm, prob I'm pretty likely to be able to find them. And do you help your speakers with where they're going to stay uh, security. Anything? We're not, not really doing management yet. Um, that's a service that we might offer down the road. Um, there's a whole con, there's a whole con, uh, topic about travel for speakers. Some people are doing flat rates for travel where they just, the client just pays a flat rate and then the speaker takes care of it. Uh, and then there are other, uh, conferences and things like that where they want to they want to book your, your air and cause they're using their points and they want to book your uh, hotel and they're using their points. So as a booking agent, I make sure all of that happens, but I don't, I don't drive the train. I just make sure it gets there. Right. You wouldn't just say, okay, you have a speaking gig in Atlanta tomorrow. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. You're on your own. No, no, because <laughs> compensation for travel is all, is part of the, uh, part of the contract that I negotiate. Right. Right. Well, I absolutely love working with you, and I want people to be able to get a hold of you. So I'm going to be putting your information down below in okay. the description of the, of the video, and I want you to be able to reach out to Jeff and have a conversation. As you can tell, he's really easy to get along with, and he's friendly, and he's very helpful. If you want to be a speaker or you want to have a more flexible life, you know, you should just reach out to him because I did. Actually, uh, I went to one of his... Uh, workshops no it was a, a networking group that you had mm -hmm. here in Houston and I was looking for speakers for my networking group 
And I, and he said, well, you know, do you want to be a speaker or no? He said, can I book you or something? I, something like that. I asked, why aren't you speaking? And I said, oh, I'm not a speaker. I'm just looking for speakers. And he looked at me and he goes, you too. You are a speaker. <laughs> well, you were speaking twice a month at your networking meeting. Right. <laughs> you were leading two groups already. So, right. yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you anyway. understood what you, and what you, what you were, what we sort of opened up your eyes to was how much business you can attract as a business speaker. That's right. Because that's know. really one of the things that sets Speaker Co-op apart from like the National Speakers Association and Toastmasters and all that. We're the organization primarily for people who speak to get clients. There you go. Bingo. Exactly yeah. what I wanted. So the other organization have different missions, but ours is to help speakers, help business people use speaking as a marketing tool. Right, right. Well, like I said, um, I will have his contact information and I hope that you will join in our community and, and just hang out with us because we're all friends. This is a community of people who are helping each other. So thank you, Jeff, for being our guest today. You're welcome. This is Marion LaSalle, and I'm living a flexible lifestyle. Bye for now.